Hello, everybody. We are here again from Bitcoin for Humanity channel. Today, we have a special guest from Kenya. His name is Guantai, and he's involved in three different Bitcoin projects. So that will be very interesting. Uh, Wantai, welcome to the channel. How are you? Uh, the, uh, first and foremost, thank you very much for the candid invitation to your profile and your platform. I'm very privileged to be here. Uh, my name is uh, Gwantai Kazurima, but I go by Master Gwantai. And I'm a proud Bitcoin maximalist from Nairobi, Kenya, with love. Great. So. Uh, uh... Tell me a little bit about uh, yourself, your story. How did you learn about the Bitcoin? What you was doing before? Yeah, basically my Bitcoin story is, uh, yeah, everyone has an interesting Bitcoin story. Mine is very simple. I've only had two jobs my whole life. Uh, first and foremost, uh, for me, after doing my education, I joined the military here in uh, Kenya. So it was in the... Kenya Navy, specifically uh, Naval Police. So did that for a minute, and then after that decided to not be a career soldier. So for me, basically it was based on, I just wanted a job whereby I could explore the world and travel and just have my peace and my own time for me. So started into forex trading, as the saying goes, lost uh, lost some money, and then I purposely decided that if there's people who can do this in the world, um, intelligent enough to do it. So I decided to just uh, sit down and study without actively trading for a year, and then the channel which explored. I was reading, writing notes and everything. And at the tail end, she started talking about Bitcoin. So when he started talking about Bitcoin, what fascinated me is for myself, I'm a Kenyan born and bred. So the Kenyan shilling is based on the US dollar, the petrol dollar. So I was very fascinated to learn about like how did this come by? Like how did the dollar come by like who said this or did that and everything so i went down the rabbit hole about studying specifically about how the dollar came about like Bretton woods and everything so it for me it came from a point of anger because our education system specifically limits us from learning how our money is brought about and what uh, like simple things like even calculating the gdp it's hidden from us so from there is when the light bulb happened that if there's if the kenya shilling is flawed and the dollar is flawed let me do some research in regards to bitcoin so based on that i went down the uh, bitcoin rabbit hole and I'm still going down. So, uh, as I said, you are in uh, three different Bitcoin projects. Uh, you are a founder of two of them, and then there yes. is a, like, there is a, a cir Bitcoin circular economy. As I'm very interested to learn about all of them. Can you tell me a little bit uh, all of all of three? Explain a little bit. Uh, yes. So, uh, I'm very very happy and proud to be a Bitcoin full-time Bitcoin educator for five years now. My journey started with uh, Bitcoin Tani. Bitcoin Tani is dedicated to basically translating and articulating everything in the Bitcoin standards and everything to do with Bitcoin in African native languages. So it's a kind of uh, educational project? Yes. Okay. So we started, when I started and everything, it was all about uh, paper translations, like we did the translations for the Bitcoin white paper. And uh, as we progressed, gradually and gradually, like uh, I, I usually take two weeks 
after every quarter to actually internalize and find out what can I do to give more impact to the space. So by introspection and everything, that is where I decided to exclusively start doing uh, educational videos, specifically on uh, TikTok and Instagram. The main reason for this was that for me, um, basically X is like an echo chamber when it comes to the Bitcoin system. So for us to get the new and younger generation into the Bitcoin standard, we must go to the platforms which they currently consume and which they like in the mode which they like. Sure. And that has served me very, very well. So and what, what that means, uh, Montano? Very strange word. Mutani, Mutani means neighborhood. Neighborhood. Like Bitcoin, Bitcoin Tani is Bitcoin in your neighborhood. So like, let's say in every neighborhood, like people have certain languages or connotations or certain phrases and everything. So it's basically localizing the knowledge of Bitcoin for it to be understood by each and every person, by each Tom, Dick, and Harry in the neighborhood. Okay, so that, that's the, the educational one. There is a, yeah. like a kind of a tourism-oriented project? The yes, the second one now, after doing uh, on my process, like on my journey now, I started with Bitcoin time, right? So as I was doing my proof of work, educating and doing everything, basically, basically X, I consider X to be the LinkedIn for Bitcoin. But now we'll speak about Nostra later in regards to uh, the circular economy we're establishing. So through my journey in the Bitcoin space, educating people and everything, I got Numerous people like coming to East Africa, basically they have never been here, especially from the States and Europe. They want their, basically they maybe they have some problems doing their visa arrangements. They would like to get like a proper referral on a place to sleep in regards to Airbnb or a hotel and that kind of thing. So I did that for several individuals. Uh, most notably, uh, happy honeymooners uh, from Istanbul. Like, I'm very, very happy to share this story because uh, the guy had a um, diplomatic passport, but the lady did not. But the lovely honeymooners wanted to come to East Africa, experience Kenya, experience Tanzania, experience Zanzibar, but now they are stopped at the airport. But now so you, you need to you started. need to have a you need to have a visa to go to Kenya or something like that. You you cannot travel just with the normal passport. No, the, the thing is when it comes to passports, um certain passports hold certain privileges. Like if you're okay. traveling, like let's say if you have an US passport, like you have all access to the whole world basically. But for me, basically coming, let's say if it's Master Bonte, I want to come to the States or I want to come to Europe, there are certain processes which are very stringent. And if we go down this rabbit hole, like the thing is the European countries and the States make a lot, a lot, a lot of money by just basically taking visa applications and then denying them for Africans to travel to the West. But mm -hmm. when it comes to the West coming to Africa, it's easy access, like you can just come. So, but the Turkish people cannot travel or they, they need to have a visa also? No, but basically what happened is uh, if you're, they are coming from Turkey, they needed a visa. But now when they went to the online platform, uh, basically it was a fraudulent website. So they paid the money, but nothing happened. And okay. then they have reservations and everything in Kenya and 
in, <laughs> in Tanzania and in Zanzibar. So at the end of the day, they just went to crash at their uh, friend's place, who happens to be, basically for me, she's like a mentor and like a leader in the Bitcoin space. So she kindly like uh, just called me and I was like, uh, uh, what's the problem? Uh, they need a visa and everything. Okay. And I made certain phone calls. They sent me Bitcoin. I offered the Bitcoin to pay the guys to organize the visa. And they actually got their visa in less than 30 minutes. Okay. So that, that's what, you, uh, what you're doing with that uh, uh, Matatu tour, right? Yes, for Bitcoin Matatu tours exclusively, what I do is arrange the visa arrangements, the transportation to and from the airport, and all the accommodation needs. And all of these are paid in Bitcoin. And then to go a step further, we curate every traveler in regards to if your family if your company, if you're an individual, basically, what do you want to see? Do you want to come to Kenya to see Bitcoin mining? Do you want to see Bitcoin mining and then like maybe go for safari? Do you, uh, do you want to see uh, uh, merchants who accept Bitcoin in the space? Do you want to see um, the projects uh, like which we do in Africa? that can be very, very curated and customized to everyone's needs. So there is no one deal for everyone. Like every client is treated extremely uh, professionally and very, very customized. Okay, so let's say it's a travel agency for Bitcoiners. Is that right? Absolutely yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and now tell yeah, me please. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, tell me please uh, about um, the Bitcoin circular economy. That's very interesting. Yes. Now, um, uh, this is uh, right now as we speak. Today is the second of October, twenty twenty four. I'm very very proud to say that uh, it has been right now. Let's say plus or minus two months. I started the Bitcoin circular economy in Kibra. Kibra is a, a, an informal settlement, basically a slum in Nairobi, Kenya. It's actually the second largest slum, second only to the Soweto slum in South Africa. So this has been very near and dear to my heart and we're doing it exclusively uh, between myself through uh, Kibra BTC and Afribit Kibra. The thing with this, uh, the founder of Afribit Kibra, Mr. Rooney, approached me in 2023, uh, let's say February. And then now, the thing with me, when it comes to Bitcoin education, I've always been the person who believes in Bitcoin for the 100%. I'll give the credit for hyper-Bitcoinization and Bitcoin for the 100% to Ray Yusuf, who is the founder of uh, uh, the Bitcoin, uh, uh, Built with Bitcoin Foundation. They have actually built schools and everything in Africa based on the Bitcoin standard. So when I say this is near and dear to my heart, what I mean is at the end of the day, Bitcoin cannot serve the whole world if we choose to only articulate it in regards to books, podcasts, and everything which is online. So certain people like myself, I choose to go to the people who first and foremost, maybe do not have reliable electricity and do not have reliable uh, internet access. That is my pivotal point. Well, that is what I decided to do going forward with Bitcoin Tani, and that is what we are doing with uh, the Kibra 
uh, BTC circular economy. So where I come in is I, I arrange the educational sessions for students. I get cohorts from the community, let's say from certain groups or certain individuals. And then now how Afribit Kibra comes in, they onboard merchants on the ground to accept Bitcoin as payment. Yes. So the, 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 the idea is that the people can earn Satoshi, let's say, and then they can uh, spend inside the community. So it's circulating and not, uh, they can, uh, let's say, uh, save a little bit of money, right? Tell me a little yeah. bit, uh, what, 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 is, um, what is the living like in, in that community? When it comes to the community, what I can say, let, let's say, um, let me give you a very good example. Let's say Master Guantai wants to have a Bitcoin meetup or Bitcoin training sessions. What I do is, I have leaders in the community who, when you have a Bitcoin training or a Bitcoin session, we can either do, uh, basically, there's the organization point of it. There's the food, there's the tents, uh, maybe there are books to be provided to them. Like uh, when we do these educational trainings, mine are solely based on the Bitcoin diploma book. Because through uh, Bitcoin Tani, I'm a, I'm part of the network. So, if we choose to pay those service providers in Bitcoin, now they can go forth to other providers, other merchants. So, if we have bought like uh, the refreshments or the food from let's say person X, they can go get a haircut or watch a movie or watch football or go to the store and buy this and that in Bitcoin. So that is how slowly but gradually we are doing the Bitcoin circular economy here in Kenya. Right. And uh, do you collaborate in any other uh, project like uh, Ekasi from South Africa or... Ubuntu, there's a lot of uh, African circular economies. Uh, are you collaborating with any of those? Yeah, but like um, uh, my answer to that is I'm very, I'm very lucky, humbled and privileged to be mentored by specifically by like Haman from Bitcoin Ekasi. Ekasi, yeah, right. Because now when the when how bit how Kibra BTC started was basically Bitcoin Beach wanted to promote Bitcoin circular economies across the globe. So they had a geyser grant in that regard. So for me, I was doing through Bitcoin Tani, I was doing Bitcoin education, we were onboarding merchants and everything. But now through uh through the interactive sessions and learning and how I applied, I was basically the, the, the sentiment was, we need to start a Bitcoin circular economy in Kenya. And for me, I always take up a challenge. So I choose, I chose to make Bitcoin tiny to be Bitcoin only educational sessions and then start Kibra BTC for the circular economy. And uh, for your viewers and everything, um, I'm very privileged we received uh, basically the maximum grant uh, based on myself uh, through uh, Kibra BTC and in collaboration with Afribit Kibura. So that is how we embarked on this journey, which is now two months old. However, we have a lot of proof of work when you go to, the, to our social media handles, yes. So that's fantastic that you, you, you have a contact with the Bitcoin Beach and Bitcoin Akasi and, uh, and the rest of them. 
Why is that that? Uh... Yeah, like they give us a lot of guidance. Like I'm very very happy that even after the grant, like for myself, like through the, in the Bitcoin space, based on my proof of work, I've received a lot of donations, a lot of grants, a lot of investments. However, with this specifically, the Bitcoin Beach grant, I really love it because there is the, how can I call it? Like there is the after. Basically, you have, uh, they have like a telegram group. We join like as Bitcoin educators across the globe so that we can benchmark, we can share ideas, you can ask a question and there's a whole community behind you. So that has been very, very key in regards to how to set up a Bitcoin circular economy. And I'm very, very grateful, especially to Bitcoin Ekasi because that is the template when it comes to setting up a Bitcoin circular economy. That's fantastic. And um... No, I was I was about to ask him, why is that that uh, Africa is now like the biggest um, incubate, incubator for uh, Bitcoin circular economy? It's like the biggest place I can see the growing those communities like day by day. It's, uh, I don't know how many of them are, but uh, it's the best. It's the biggest uh, place in the that world. Is, that is the most fantastic question you have asked me today. Like um, just yesterday, the Q4 map for Africa Bitcoin projects by uh, Africa Bitcoiners was actually published. So we have 210 Bitcoin projects in Africa as we speak for Q4 2024. Wow. And that warms my heart, uh, yes, I'm very privileged to be a leader when it comes to the Bitcoin space in Kenya because uh, myself, I have uh, three projects. So the proof of work is there. Now to answer your question is, Africa has always been neglected and basically pillaged when it came to the fiat monetary system. But in the Bitcoin system right now is what does Africa have to offer? The youngest and most vibrant and most innovative youth group in the whole world. Like basically any African country, like very, very easy, plus or minus 60% are youth. And because the youth are disenfranchised by their governments, and they cannot get this or that, regardless of their talent, competence, skills, or education. Now they take that plus the Bitcoin knowledge they have, and then that is what now explodes to be what Africa has to offer to the Bitcoin ecosystem in the whole world. Wow, that's fantastic. Last question I have for you, Wantai. What Bitcoin means personally to you? Bitcoin is hope. When we say Bitcoin is hope, a lot of people just take it simply or easily. Like it's an, an issue. But I can speak from a personal perspective because I've been humble and diligent enough to learn about Bitcoin and do my best to provide value to the Bitcoin ecosystem to the point whereby I can be self-reliant, like plus or minus 90% in regards to all my business and everything and being a full-time Bitcoin educator. And that is the template which I take to the African youth and tell them, if I can be Master Guantai, if I can eat and do my things and be fresh and clean, like for your interview, also them, they can 
basically take their skills, talents, competencies, and education, and then learn about Bitcoin, and then stop driving, but actually add value and strive and be the best they can be in the world. That's fantastic. Thank you very much, Guantai, for this interview. I hope you, I hope and I wish you the very best for all of your projects. And uh, thank you again for uh, the interview. The pleasure is all mine. Thank you very much for inviting me to Asante Sam. That means thank you very much in Swahili. <laughs>